Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Cardboard Heralds Off the Table, your Monday morning tabletop gaming news community and questions in 10 minutes or less. As always, I'm your host, Jack, and let's get this show rolling. Our first news item is that Stronghold slash Indie Board Games is suing Plan B games over the Great Western Trail. So here's the shtick, as far as I understand it, is that you have the German company Egertspiel, which owned the rights to Great Western Trail, right? And Stronghold comes along, is like, yo, can I publish this in the United States? And we will have exclusive rights from 2016 through 2018. And Spiel is like, yeah, have at it. So Stronghold publishes it, it is a wild success, and then they go to do a reprint, but lo and behold, Egertspiel has been bought by Plan B Games. And Plan B Games says, no, nah, we're not going to let you do this 2017 reprint for this highly in-demand game. Then Plan B Games in January of 2018 comes out with their own version of Great Western Trail in English for English territories, and there is the problem. Supposedly, the publishing contract is out there, and if a company bought another company with an existing contract, you'd think that they'd be obligated to honor it. But then again, this is dealing with multiple countries' copyright law, and copyright law is some of the most wild stuff out there. So... If indeed Stronghold should have been the ones publishing this through 2018, then looks like they have a pretty good case. And speaking of money, IVC2 is reporting that the hobby game sales were over 1.5 billion in 2018. This is my favorite kind of article. Now, it's not exact figures, but there's some science in how they figure this stuff out. And it looks like collectible games are down, RPGs, hobby board games, and non-collectible minis are up. And then hobby card and dice games are pretty much laying flat. But interestingly, hobby games are slowing down in their growth compared to previous years, which could be an indicator of the board game bubble. But really, you're going to have to go somewhere else for some wild speculation on that sort of stuff. For this, I just really love numbers and find this article endlessly fascinating and worth a read. Now, if you do want some wild speculation, let's talk about the Kickstarter suspension for Papillion, Hunt for the Ravager, and Folding Space. So, Colossal Games was involved in all of these projects, and Colossal has released statements saying that they're looking into it, trying to figure out what's at the bottom of this. Why is Kickstarter suspending these campaigns? And Kickstarter isn't exactly being transparent about everything here. They've sent messages out, and in the case of one of these campaigns, they were already funded and the Kickstarter was closed, and people are getting refunded their money, which... I don't know that I've actually heard of before. And what I do know is that Colossal has at least like eight different Kickstarters that they funded or were in the process of funding and they haven't delivered on any of those. And in some cases, they've been running multiple concurrent campaigns, albeit sometimes under different aliases, or sometimes they were just assisting with a Kickstarter campaign for another publishing company. Either way, like I said, Kickstarter isn't exactly transparent, nor are they consistent about how they enforce some of this stuff, because there have been companies that have been doing oodles of Kickstarter stuff with multiple unfulfilled campaigns at the same time. I'm looking at you, Simon. But it's clear that Colossal crossed some sort of line, and this could have a really big impact and set a precedent for what is a huge part of our hobby as it exists in 2019. So as we find out more, I'll definitely be following up with you. So let's turn our heads over to announcements, and I'm going to be honest, not much was announced this week. I had to really scramble for some stuff. I mean, hey, look out, what an expansion to Bunny Kingdoms in the sky. Yo, they got them chocobos in that thing now? And it looks like Capstone is bringing a 20th anniversary edition of Bus, 
which has the retail edition in it with all the deluxified components on top of that. It's all going to fit in the box. It has some of the original artwork. This is one of those beloved old splatter games that people are crazy for, and I'm actually really looking forward to this thing. Though the MSRP is a hundred bucks, but for an old Euro game about public transportation infrastructure, it does look real nice. So our highlight for this week is going to be another channel. You know, I get exposed to so many channels being part of the tabletop gaming media landscape. And while there's so many cool ones out there, one that consistently I find so entertaining is Plumpy Thimble. It's another board game review and humor channel. And Daniel Robinson, who runs it, he just has such a fantastic delivery. He always seems so cool and casual, and his observations are really astute, but at the same time, his satirical deadpan delivery is cutting, precise, and always so funny. You may have seen his viral video all about the Key Forge naming conventions. You know that one? Well, I asked Daniel to come onto the show and see if he could give us some advice about how to manage our collections, you know, when we're dealing with games that aren't necessarily seeing the table anymore. So here's what Daniel had to say. When it comes to removing games from my collection, I like to go back to that classic piece of American cinema, 2012's biting satire on the state of the board game hobby, The Purge. So just imagine yourself in The Purge and follow these three rules. One, identify your target. Just as there might have been a mechanic that ripped you off and you want to seek them out in the purge, do the same when you're purging board games. Find one that has bit you in the past or that you don't quite enjoy anymore and add that to your list and let that become your target. Two, have a disposal plan. Understand that it isn't just as simple as getting rid of these games. Are you going to throw them away, donate them, give them to other friends? And three, don't waver the course. Once you've identified your targets and you've come up with a plan of action, follow through with it. Follow those three simple rules and have a safe purge. The purge, huh? Well, that's not creepy at all. Thank you so much, Daniel, for coming on to the show. If you want to check out Plumpy Thimble, which you should, then you need to click on the link in the video description below. And that is going to take us to the very last segment of our show today, which is, as always, questions. And I've been thinking a lot about this whole onboarding thing, right? Getting people prepared for board games. And I hear about gateway games a lot. You know, you've seen it too. People are recommending Pandemic and Catan and, you know, maybe King of Tokyo. I want to know about the experiences you've had with non-traditional gateway games. You know, think about it this way. If I have a friend who's super into the Lord of the Rings, then I might say, yo, you ever played Risk? Let me blow your mind and introduce you to War of the Ring. That may be the best possible gateway game, or it could be an utter failure. So I want to know, have you had any experience with non-traditional gateway games, either where you are introducing someone else to games or your own experience of getting into the hobby where someone tried getting you in with something that was just way over your head and kind of push you back for a while. So success or disaster, I want to hear about it. And that's going to do it for our show today. So thank you so much for watching and supporting the Cardboard Herald. I haven't even had a chance to say it, but thank you for taking us past the threshold of 1,000 subscribers. So seriously, thank you. So long as you're into it, I'm going to keep on giving it. So that's going to do it for our show today. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald, and I'll talk to you next week. If you enjoyed this video, we have all kinds of other reviews, interviews, and recommendations via writing, podcasts, and video here on our channel and website CardboardHerald.com. Our content is audience supported, so if you want to show your support, please visit our Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.